Etsy, and um, I'm a creative placemaker, and I have a company called Core Creative Placemaking, and my business partner is my husband, Dan Thurlon, who is a um, artist extraordinaire. So um, I'll just tell you a little bit about, um, you know, this creating the lovely vibrant and prosperous environments, um, which is, you know, what we all try to do like through the bid or, or whatever organizations or community organizations that towns have in their downtown, you know, where they try to come together and make things happen because we all know that when things are happening, you have a safer, more livable, um, more cohesive community. So um, that's sort of what our what we do with our company. Um, and, and I'll tell you just a brief history about, you know, my background and Dan's background. So I started out doing um, work in the inner city in Newark. And uh, I worked for about 10 or 12 years in the inner city developing programs and services, uh, usually for homeless people, homeless children, families. Um, and I would go into, say, a homeless shelter for women and children and kind of talk with the people that were running it and say, what's missing? The same thing you would do in a community. Like, what are you lacking? So we'd come up with, like, you know, something, like a need. And then I was fortunate enough, um, I was the program manager for an organization called Jersey Cares, which um, at that time, I was going back a long time, had about 3,000 volunteers. Now I'm sure there's a lot more. So we would come up with a project like say, what they're missing is when the mothers go to therapy, the kids need help with their homework. So then it was like, okay, figuring out like young professionals that were interested in after work, instead of going to the bar, which they would do after they did the project, they'd drive down to work all together and they'd go to the homeless shelter every Tuesday night and they would sit with the kids and help them do their homework. So, you know, I was doing those kinds of things. It was a little bit more social, uh, almost like social work type uh, work. Um, and then um, I ended up leaving that job and I started working with the uh, county arts organization. Um, I, at that time it was called the Director of Arts and Community. Now it's, now they've changed it to Director of Creative Placemaking. And I ran the grant program and, and did sort of what you all do in your community now. And Dan, on the other hand, has a, a, a very extensive background in, started out as, went to uh, the Museum School of Fine Arts, so he's a fine art painter. Um, and then he graduated, got a job at Siva Gaidi, did packaging design. Then he went to another firm and he did a lot of work for Major League Baseball, branding for Major League Baseball. And then he started doing murals and I was over here, he was over here, so we sort of decided to kind of take what we did and put it together and started working with communities to really kind of discover what kinds of things they wanted. And also Dan developed a really great kind of process for how to include community in not just kind of thinking about what the community needed, what kind of vision they want to see, but also hands-on. So that's that. So I'll quickly, um, so maybe we should just go up down to the, um, yeah. So uh, let's just go up to services. And I don't want this to just be, you know, but I'm just trying to. All right, service, would you want to go to the portfolio? Yeah, portfolio, sorry. So this is what we were talking about. And I hear that you all do a great. You want to try to start that here. <laughs> a great event yeah. called, uh, you have a, a Halloween type event. So this is a pumpkin illumination. And this project started, literally, we were sitting around this pond, the two of us one day, and we said, wouldn't it be cool to see pumpkins lined up? And Dan, do you have other pictures? I, I, yeah, yes. So, um, pumpkins, yeah. so we were like, wouldn't it be cool to see pumpkins lining along here uh, in the fall? And so the first, the first uh, event that we did, uh, we probably had about 40 people show up with their already carved pumpkins. And then we, it was just 
super simple. We just lined them up and faced them in towards the water so when it got dark, it was reflecting. So that morphed into 10 years later, is it yes. 10 or 11 years now? Um, we've included these giant masks that Dan makes out of um, uh, scrap cardboard. And it's, they do residencies in the schools with the kids. And he goes into a school and works with uh, different age groups in creating these large giant masks. Mm -hmm. So then uh, what happens, these are some of the kids working on some of the projects at the actual event. Um, then the kids come to the event and um, Dan usually stores all the big masks, because you need like a truck to carry them around now, and puts them all around. And then the kids come and they put their pumpkin out. And now it, it's gone from just 40 pumpkins to we have, um, last time I think we had over 1,000 people, 1,200 people. We had the police across the kids across the street. And uh, we also hired a jazz band and the jazz band now uh, comes and performs. And then we went another level, and we went out and bought like, twinkle lights and, and a little electric packs and decorated the giant mask with lights. Um, and then we went another step further the following year, and we had the, uh, a couple of people, one that plays the saxophone, kind of do like the New Orleans jazz kind of music, and we turned it into a light parade. So now it's the pumpkin illumination, it's a jazz festival, jazz music, and then it's a light parade where the kids put the masks on and they wear their other their own masks and they go around in a big circle and And now we've expanded it to other towns too. Yeah, so then we, we did it in Marstown. Then we go ahead. Dan. And we give people like a model for how to run it themselves, you know. Right. So we do it one year with them and then like Boot has just taken it over and they have some creative people there who've turned it into their own, their own. thing, you know. And, uh, and they and they get, it became like a major town event for them, you know. And Dover, we just did last year, we're hoping that they're going to continue, you know. You know, because not every town also has this reflecting on in the middle yeah. of town. Yeah. So people kind of make their, their own in whatever oh, way. Oh, it is, yeah, the restaurant, you know. Yeah. In whatever way they can, you know. So, um, so this is just an example. And, and you know, I, I, I had this great today and I saw how many things are going on in this town which is really impressive um, and it's just and by the way we take for granted we're like we're not doing enough oh my god no you're, oh. you're, you're so we're far so ahead of the curve we take yeah. it for granted yeah we, we go around to a lot of places too. we go around to a lot of places and literally sometimes I'll be in a room like this and I'll say so what's good about your community and nobody will raise their hand like nobody and then I have to start telling them what's good about their community because I do research a lot so it's like, well, what's happening? They'll say, nothing. And I'll say, well, what about the music at the library? Or what about the beautiful flowers you have hanging from your... So then they start to say, oh, yeah, that's that wouldn't be there unless people got together and actually made it happen. So um, a lot of what we do, you know, we try to get people, which it seems you've already done, to understand that not everything takes a ton of money. And we like to use recycled materials when we can. And Dan is like a big uh, cardboard recycling maniac. <laughs> so, um, you know, if, if we're driving down the street and he sees a well, now refrigerator with, box, oh. now with um, <laughs> that's like gold. Dan, what is it? Uh, Amazon. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Amazon. 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 And then people don't even bother breaking the boxes down anymore. You just see these giant Amazon boxes yeah. on the side of the road. So it's like, yeah, um, it's becoming uh, kind of an issue, but we have a lot of cardboard. So um, let's move on. You want to go to the toilet? Uh, you want to yeah. put that So out? that's I think a, I saw that. Yeah, this, that I think there? you saw it. I think I saw the video of it. Do you mind if I should? Is, yeah, is no, that go ahead. okay? It's so I just, video, so I just want to explain um, a little bit. Like we went from doing the pumpkin illumination, which is a very grassroots kind of um, starting from the bottom up, and 
And this is the other end of the spectrum. This is a project that cost a lot of money. So I wanted to explain how we got the money to do it. So this project is a combination, it's a short video documentary. It's, um, it's a combination of getting a National Endowment for the Arts grant, which is really hard to get. <laughs> Just a for once. Oh, you did? <laughs> for the bridges here? I don't know if you walked by the water. Yes, we did. So we have two spans of bridges and they create this giant blank wall. Yes. So we want to do um, a mural. Oh, that would be that. great. But we want to have it a, have a transformative quality. Yes. So whether that changes, like when it rains, all of a sudden you see something new, or whether oh, I love like, that. changes, old, whatever. We want something transformative about it because we feel that. This area of the downtown is transforming, so yes. there's that quality to it. Um, and then this is also a redevelopment area. This area here is slated for redevelopment. Okay. Um, and it's going to be a new building coming, a new waterfront park, so we also want to ask for some staff to come incorporate into the new waterfront so park. So you have, did you as did apply to the NEA The grant? town server. I is a town server. Okay. The town server apply. Apply. Well, good luck. Yeah. Let's see if we get it. I'm I know it's hard. Area, I, I, yeah. I, I, uh, I think I applied eight times. Probably, not for the same project, oh, but other right. projects. Um, so it was partially an NEA grant. I think the NEA grant was like for 45000 And then um, the other thing that we were able to get started, and we spoke briefly about this, is we have a lot of redevelopment happening. Uh, you know, everybody does, all over. So um, uh, I had presented to the mayor about nine years ago the idea of every time somebody builds in a redevelopment zone, they were required to give $100,000 to public art, and it actually passed. And that took eight years. That's why I try to always tell people, people are like, oh, nothing's happening. And I said, no, the only, this is all happening, but this is 20 years of my life, and you know, trying things over and over. So this project was funded by the NEA, it was $50,000 of the developer's $100,000, um, you know, uh, that they had to give. So it's 50 of that, 45 from the NEA. Um, I think we got another 20 maybe from the state, and the rest of it was all raised private foundation, private donations. And uh, so I'm just going to show you this because it's kind of like, a bigger project, um, but it just can give you an idea of the scope. And, and also, I wanted to mention that part of the reason that I wanted to have a documentary film made of it was because um, it also I was able to hire with that money a young and upcoming filmmaker mm -hmm. and pay him. I also was able to hire a young and upcoming um, music uh, composer. And she actually came to the art studio and wrote down notes as she was watching the artist and composed the original soundtrack for this. So it's not just the artist, it was the community of arts people that I felt very happy I was able to pay them. So um, anyway, let's, should we just see them this movie? Do you mind? Okay. Why shouldn't the artist decide what's important to, uh, to, to people, to their culture? So all I did was giving a platform so they could act, they could really express themselves. That was a platform to do that by having totem poles. It's really something that should have been done a long time ago. You know, it should have been done to the people that settled uh, 
we're on the street now, okay? So when you drive by, you will have two icons you can see. If you walk on the walkway, you see one on each side. And then in the back will be benches. So you actually will be able to sit and view this side and the back side and this side and the back side the most. So this is how it's going to be laid out. Has too much stone on it yet. So something they should look at, can look at, and say, hey, how is this done? thing from our stars right now is that this is really going to change the face of who we are in the community and already has because we're moving into a whole other area that we've never really been able to do before which is real public art. So um, to be able to facilitate this kind of a change in the face of Marstown is really exciting. It's giving a voice to all these issues that have been going on for so many years, and I love the whole regional flora, fauna, the images. It's so earthy and so organic, organic and so deeply rooted in the earth. This is the Mexican sailfish. You the water. for the synagogue in Morristown, for that area, 
and they felt that they were represented this way the best. And I thought that was a, a great thing to do, um, to have a cultural representation. And we wanted to honor that immigrant experience as part of who Marstown is as a people. And nothing could have said it better than something done in stone. I'm actually going to put another bit on here now. They're combining a lot of things, and it's great to have have the community involved to help build this because it's not just about us or my little vision or but an artist or a craft person. It's really all, all about us. Everything works together. We're all interconnected. Everything is interconnected, and I think that's what we're sort of trying to demonstrate in our spaces. gods of, of the previous generations. So um, 
you know, I think it's very important. And what happens now in this sculpture is not, it's not the end to the sculpture, just like it's not the end to do a mural. Um, that's really creating a space for other things to happen. So what happens now in front of those two uh, totems is they have programming there. So there's poetry, there's music, there's dance, and it's all the people from that community that come and now feel that that is their space. So, you know, art to me is not an end to, to an end, it's just the beginning of marking like the pocket, the pocket park that we saw today and the murals and so many other things are just beautiful but they give a space an identity that then allows other things to happen and activities to grow from them so um, does anybody have any questions about anything who are some of the so so what often gets in the way of any organization or town or, or body is trying to get the disparate elements together, who's given approvals, who feels it's not part of the master plan. Take that project, for example. How many different organizations okay. have to be involved to, to make it happen? Okay, so um, first of all, the local arts organization, Morris Arts, was involved. Um, Phil Abramson from Topology, mm -hmm. who is the master planner at Mars Town. The town administrator, uh, the mayor, um, the developer, um, let's see, the town council. The had, developer of, of what? The developer right across the street Did from the housing across from it. Housing project? Yeah, big housing, like expensive condos were being built. So the developer uh, was, was involved because he gave the money. So, um, you know, on the, on the town side, you know, this whole idea of kind of before I started any kind of process, I had to go before the town planner and the, basically the mayor too, and the town administrator to kind of, they thought it was a good idea. So once they thought it was a good idea, then you can start to bring in, um, you know, the town engineer had to be a part of it um, because we had to have footings. Uh, there had to be contracts uh, put together. So the town attorney uh, was part of doing the contracting. Um, so, and that, and that's not even mentioning the community people that were involved in coming up with what icons they wanted to represent their particular cultural uh, group. What, what's the nature of, the, of uh, Morris Arts? What kind of organization is it? Is, it, a, is it government? Is it quasi? Uh, it, it pretty much every county in, in New Jersey has a designated arts organization or a designated arts uh, cultural and heritage organization. Mars Arts is one of the few, Mammoth is another one, that is a private, um, a private nonprofit. It's not affiliated with the government. How is it funded? It's funded through private donations and the state, New Jersey State uh, Council on the Arts also funds it, funding. provides funding, and that, that funding that the New Jersey State Council provides, one of the stipulations in, in, in them receiving the money is it has to, some of that money has to be re-granted out to smaller 501c3 arts organizations in the community. It doesn't have to be an arts organization, it could be a library, it could be an organization that provides arts programming on some level. So. Um, you know, there's a lot that goes into it, and, and including the actual community engagement sessions, um, which one of the things I feel that that we are able to do because we've done it for a long time is we know how to bring people together without them killing each other. Are you <laughs> part of <laughs> the that's, that's a big excuse are me. You, you, no, not no no longer. No, I you work. I was, and now they, I left Mars Arts to start my own business, and they hired me back as a consultant mm -hmm. to run the Percent for Art project. Um, so I consult with them now. So Mars Arts was like the executive producer for the Totem project? Right, uh, right. I saw the whole project from beginning to end. Right. I did. <laughs> <laughs> and and as an employee, it's applied for the grant then, correct? 
Yes. Yeah. So if you apply for a grant, then you're responsible for managing. Right. Yes. Yeah. yeah. What other kinds of projects have they been successful in completing? Uh, in doing, um, well, this this was probably there was another big project, not quite this big. There was a mural project that they did in Marstown um, that was uh, the result of a um, Mid Atlantic Arts Foundation grant, which was done probably eight years prior to that. That was a community mural. Uh, they've also... Um, arts and education. They have a huge arts and education program where they organize artists to go into schools and um, teach, teach art to students um, in whatever kind of format that artist uses, whether it be uh, acting, poetry, uh, mural making, uh, paper mache, um, and Mars Arts oh, oh, actually oh, uh, runs a very, very strong arts and education program, not just in Mars County, but all over. They pull the money together to pay the artists. To and, the, and the schools pay, too. A lot of times it'll be the parent-teacher associations will raise the money. Um, and the other thing that, that happens there, which I think is a great idea, is there's someone who is uh, in charge of that program. If you're, who will take an artist, say a photographer, will come in and say, I want to be in the arts and education program. And she will say, well, that's great, but it's not that simple. You don't go in and just teach photography. You actually have to learn how to teach photography that is related to the core curriculum. So it's like a training session on training. So it's a wonderful way to also talk about sustainability. It's helping artists to, to make a living. Um, you know, and, and, and we're very much a part, of, I'm very, pretty adamant about making sure artists get paid. I, I, I'm, a, I'm, I'm really on a mission. Uh, and sometimes people will say, well, they'll volunteer. Uh, I say, if you don't put a, a, a value on something, a dollar value, people are not going to value it as much as a car or getting your car fixed. Um, you know, and then there's always the thing that people say, well, it's for exposure. Uh, <laughs> you know, normally people don't get... You know, I always use the car analogy, like people go to get their car fixed, the mechanic doesn't say, well, I'm not going to charge you because you're getting exposure. And, and so that's kind of my little mission. Where was the pumpkin illumination started? Uh, right in, yeah, right in Morristown. Yeah, right in downtown Morristown. So they, they do a lot of other programs. Um, and the town now does something called Meet Me in Morristown, which I'm sure you do something similar where the, the last day of the month during the nice weather, uh, there's town-wide permits for people to sell on the sidewalk. Uh, there's permits to do busking so musicians can collect money. Um, and what it's a thing called busking. 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 Oh. So you can put out a. It's yeah. Otherwise, it's not legal to sit on the street and put a bucket out. Okay. No, we don't have those permits, but I'm kind of curious to see what. Yeah, you can get like an overall for the night and. Um, so it's a coordination of artists coming into the downtown. It's, it's again, um, you have to bring your own table, your own chairs. You don't provide, you set up your own thing. You, you do your own cash. Uh, it's a collaboration between the Business Improvement District and the artists. Did the artists register with the... Yes. Yeah. And there's a fee, they have to pay. Yeah, there's like a $10 yeah. or $20 yeah. fee. They don't have to be for more. Oh, no, no. First Friday? No. It's on, it's, it's, on, it's on Thursday. Yeah. Yeah. So I've seen it, yeah. Oh, yeah, kind of like similar to First Friday. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. How do you know that you've been a success? Or do you have a metric? Or have you gotten any kind of feedback? Because it is someone I'm taking tangible. Yes. Um, I think, I think, well, one of the things that, you know, for myself, it's not, it, it's, it's more of a, um, the measure of success for me is when other towns want us to do this for them. <laughs> yeah. And uh, kind of teach them. So you know when you see it, what you're saying? Yeah, that's kind of, I mean, I know that there oh, are, statistics if, if you look at the, um, I believe it's the uh, National Endowment for the Arts and Art Pride. If, if you're not familiar with Art Pride, look it up. 
Um, our project does a really great job of actually doing statistics and putting numbers and percentages of um, economic improvement in communities that utilize arts and culture. And you can really go on there and get some great metrics. Yes, yeah. So um, Art Pride has a lot of those numbers, as does the NEA, as does the Americans for the Arts. If you go on the Americans for the Arts website, Americans for the Arts. Americans for the Arts. America. Amer Americans. 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 Americans for the Arts. Right? Americans. Mm -hmm. Americans for the Arts. There is a such a vast amount of knowledge there. Uh, they have uh, uh, examples of contracts that people use between artists and, and towns. They have grant writing. They have places to get funding. Um, they pretty much. They, they ha it's like a library of knowledge. And they also have more metrics and more studies about the impact of arts and culture on economic development, which is really what people want to hear. You know, the people that are making, the, allowing you to, I wasn't thinking about that. Right. No, but you know, when you're going to a mayor, yeah. most mayors aren't going to say, isn't it nice that you're going to make these nice things happen? They're going to say, uh, they want to tell the businesses and they want to tell the town council that this is going to increase uh, foot traffic in our town, which in turn will increase people going to the restaurants, buying things in the store, stopping to get gas, whatever it is, um, it's going to make your community more economically sustainable and viable. So, and, and I would suggest if you need metrics or if you need those statistics if you're writing a grant, go on to Americans for the Arts or Art Pride, because they break it down like they'll have New Jersey, and and they'll give you actual numbers or yeah. statistics. The metrics always the hardest to write for grants, so right? I know. What's well, going to be the outcome? And what are you? I'm like, uh, it's it's hard. It's going to be beautiful. I don't know. <laughs> right. what else to tell you? People, people were smiling. Money, though, yeah, when I used to read grants, it's like you'd ask people what the outcome is. So people were smiling. It's like you got to yeah. say a little more than that. Yeah. You know, uh, yeah. like you could say, well, ten people came the first year. The second year, there was 30 people there, and the demographic that came is a little more diverse than it was the previous year, or something like that. Yeah, I mean, yeah. like I'm um, in meeting you with Morristown, like talking to the restaurant owners, they'll be like, "Oh, it's such a boom for our business when that happens," you know. So yeah. maybe interviewing people like that. Yes. You know, yeah. yeah. Talking to people in you know the stores, like, "Oh, yeah, people are." I mean, you know, they have to put extra staff on right, yeah. on those nights. You know, yeah. if you go into the restaurant, that's what's the hardest part. It's like, how are you gonna, you know, quantify this? Right? Yeah. Oh, so I, I have to really put a real metric, and I can't just say something. Right, and and it's the same. Like you yeah. have the theaters here, mm -hmm. you know, and that's a huge. Uh, and that was just a draw. Reason. That was one big thing to me. Two years ago, maybe to downtown, not very long. So they made a huge dent. Yeah. I'm hoping that the other music buildings are going to be. Yeah, because people like, as you as you know, I mean, people like to eat and drink and do something before and after. And they actually came, I think they have a, a numbers on the Art Pride site that actually say for every, I think for every $5 that a person spends on an art experience, I think $2 of that goes into the community for entertainment before. So it's interesting. Yeah. So does anybody else have any other questions? Yeah. I mean, we have a lot of fun. We, we just did um, a project in Milburn, New Jersey, which was interesting. And, and they saw they saw me do a presentation and the, the mayor. So we, we met with them, and they wanted to do something that celebrated the diversity in their community. And they came up. I thought was a great idea with these. Uh, Milburn is a little town, so they had these wooden wheels that they actually purchased from the Amish people. That they make these beautiful wooden miniature wheels, about three feet, and um, they purchased a bunch of them. And different organizations signed up. They took a wheel. Dan did um, classes on different techniques that you could use for decoupage if you don't actually paint. Um, also, different materials you could use on the 
on the wheel for it to be able to be outside for a while. So I think, it, Dan, how long was that project? Can we work on that? Oh, that was, um, we started in June, right? May or June, and then... Um, May, I think. Here's, here's just one example. They're not too much. They kind of start posting their stuff. But here's one of the, um, so I worked with the Historical Society and helped them create this mill wheel that represented um, their history, the history of the town of Milburn, which was a huge mill town. Um, you know, they also wanted to um, talk about diversity because uh, they had a large African American population and a Chinese, a large Chinese population oh, yeah, going back to the Chinese. 1800s. And uh, now they have a, a lot of um, Indian people living there. So, um, yeah, so there was 27 wheels like this that were painted completely different than this. Some of them were hand-painted Chinese. Uh, they had um, all sorts of... Yeah, and then I worked with different organizations to help them, um, you know, uh, facilitate their meals. So, like, give them help with how do you apply, you know, decoupage At and the senior like center, you know, so yeah. the seniors got involved. So the culminating event was just a week ago. And they had all these wheels displayed, 27 of them, out in the park representing 27 organizations from the community. And each wheel, uh, there was a table where people from the organization had information about their organization and what they do and their mission. And they had Indian dance and they had um, Chinese uh, singers, they had food trucks. And uh, it turned into a really beautiful uh, downtown event. And also, uh, Dan uh, branded the event because he has a graphic design background. So he invented a logo for them. So now they can do it on their own. They, they're not going to need us next year because I feel like we got them all set. Now they have the contracts for the artists. They have a beautiful logo. They have the protocol of how to do it on their own. So yeah, we, we got the wheels rolling. Yeah, we called it. We called it and the wheels, pun was intended. Mill wheels rolling into Milburn. <laughs> <laughs> and the other thing I like about these wheels, you know how they have all the fiberglass dogs and horses? Have you yeah. seen those and the fish? Yeah. I always say, you know, 50 years from now, they're going to be in a landfill, those fiberglass animals, and people are going to be saying, what were these people doing with these giant fiberglass cows yeah. that are all painted? Yeah. <laughs> the thing I like about this is they're real wood. Yeah. So they're much more sustainable. So I like the idea of starting they're to They're actually, you can use them as a mill wheel. They're, they're really mill wheels. Yeah, they're, or you can use them in the backyard as miniature golf for your kids. Yeah. 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 You can charge your phone. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so um, you know, that's kind of what we do. And, and um, you know, we're very familiar with sustainable New Jersey and, you know, how they have their credits that are their point system that you can get for doing arts and cultural activities in your community. And you guys, you could probably have gotten a lot of points for everything you've done, right? Yeah, well we just did our arts and cultural district, so we'll commit for points for that. And then we just uh, amended our new so we'll do that as well. So I'm curious, I have a question about your arts and cultural district. How did that happen? And um, well, the first step we did is um, we created the cap. So actually, we we had the cap, but the cap was not um, responsible for all the townships. So the cap is called the Community Arts Project. Right. The group that was created under the Business and Community District to help with uh, creating arts activities to, to the downtown. Okay. So they did um, Seymour Johnson sculptures one summer. They did Brian Hannon sculptures another year. They, so they've done like different summer activities. Yeah. So we asked them, we created the Arts and um, Cultural Master Plan, which is the first element we've ever had to address Arts and Cultural That's great. We've had a historic preservation element, but that's the first time we've ever done one of that. Um, and we modeled it after um, uh, the one that was done for Asbury Park by Monica County. So yes. we modeled it after there. And that's a good one. Yeah. Um, and we created, you know, we took an inventory of everything we had, every statue, every painting, every everything that we have yeah. in, um, in, in the downtown, any you know, old existing murals we had, any proposed murals, um, things like that. So that's all in there. The, um, 
locations that we have where people can put radar or have a musical event or whatever, or practice or whatever. So we listed everything, including town hall rooms, if they could use the library or whatever. Um, <clears throat> and then after that, we had a meeting with everybody to discuss. And the bid after the Jane Lindner Brothers Foundation was pretty good because they had, um, they had sessions for the meeting with the chamber, the bid members, um, and some other organizations. Um, those are three of them. It was pretty much listening sessions about what the business community wanted, and a lot of things that came up was we needed to bring more of our people to the community, that you know, there's no reason why we can't hang up um, art in our lobbies, mm -hmm. our hotels, mm -hmm. our hospital, and bring uh, performances to those facilities in downtown, and you know, different. So, based on all that conversation and meetings with the app, um, we came up with some guidance as to what we wanted. So we wanted the downtown as the, the destination, a year-round year destination, um, or a beach as our tourism destination. Okay. <clears throat> and um, and then some other supporting venues, like the you know, hospital lobbies and the hotels oh, so. and all that as kind of like support. So yeah. They should also be incorporated, but right now the focus was downtown for our residential districts. So the the CAP was asked to join with the Chamber because when only under the bid, only spend, the money was only allowed to be spent on the bid. Okay. So we asked them to join with the Chamber and the bid so they could represent the whole town. And at that point, the township would be willing to designate them as our parks and corporate um, committee. Okay. Because that was their whole thing. Well, you said you were really doing our master plan, and you were going to designate the committee. And we're, Designated path, but only if you represent all council. Okay. So that was they did that. That's a lot of work. Yeah. So they did that. They met with chamber. They if it was on board with it. Um. So they are a new entity, still called the cap, but now it represents everybody. Okay. The crafted resolution to appoint them as the what's called the committee, and then they have been going through our arts and master plan and saying, okay, well. We need to implement this and prioritizing what needs to be implemented first. Um, they wanted, they were pushing the historic district, but also pushing the meter space. Okay. So they want a meter space. In the, in the town? Yes. So that's one of the it's items. Old. And actually, maker space and the performance venues um, in public are all elements now in our um, rebound plans that must be incorporated if they I love that. The, that's really in pieces. So it's um, mm -hmm. when you have that, it's just in um, within the arts and culture district. Yeah. Oh, I have, say it's buildings that are within the culture right. District. But that's pretty much a redevelopment area. Okay. Uh, a lot of our areas. Right. We can always expand it. It's really well. interesting. Is it's a it's an interesting take rather than have the percent for art. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That they actually have to do it themselves. Yeah, they right. Have to do it. Right. That makes a lot so of the developer has to do that. They want to get to. I love that. And uh, for the developer here, we're asking them to create the park, and they're actually also looking at developing the outdoor amphitheater. Oh, that's great. It would be across the street. So this would actually along the water would function as a river walk from Honey Park downtown to the new amphitheater. That's going to be amazing. And then that bridge to get the ground would be okay. there. If you don't get it this year, you'll get it another year. I know yeah. it's so frustrating. Mm -hmm. but I know. The grants are. And you're always like, ah, I know you have to worry a certain way. Or oh. you know, right. That's sort of important. Right. I, I found that maybe one of the reasons we finally got it was because um, previously when I had written NEA grants, it was always we were going to partner with. Yeah. But I had been doing it for so long, I could actually say we yeah. already partner with. I could read that actually. Right. said that we are we are from the past. Yeah, yeah, and I think yeah. that's what they really, I think that's what they're really looking for. Is organizations that aren't that aren't saying they're going to partner that yeah. actually already do. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. So does anybody have any other? I have to say that's our grantee process. That's the one question oh. that I have because okay. um, if we get this grant, how do we go about it? Getting the artists. Um, I use Cafe. Uh, call for it. It's uh, C A F E, but it's uh, yeah. What is it? It's our call for artists.org. Yeah. 
Yeah, and, and there's a, the other one, publicartists.org? Yeah. 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 yeah, it's, isn't it called, it's, look it up call on the website. Call for entries. Yeah, call for yeah, entry. Yeah, it's called Cafe. And, um, call for entry. Dot .org. Or, yeah. uh, dot .org, I'm sorry. So yeah. you, what you do is you upload your RFP or RFQ onto the site. Um, there's a fee involved, um, but it's so worth it. Um, it's free for the artists, unless you decide that you want them to pay a fee to, to enter, join the call. Okay. Um, so unless you decide that you want them to pay a fee to join the call. And then there's uh, publicartists.org. Mm -hmm. That's another one. Right? So, yeah. so you can set up a, a back end on, on their website to um, you know, put out a call for artists and yeah. There's a whole I system. I guess with the call yeah. artists, like you want to URLs. You know, yeah. Like, yeah. Do you need to specify. Yeah, you specify. Because, I mean, well, I'm usually sure I have to make it out of glass. I'm sure I have to right. this, but the only thing you have to have is this type of call. You can, um, you, can right. you know, specify all that in the call, and you can also specify if you want it to be local artists or Jersey national artists. or international call. Right. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of um, <laughs> different cr criteria that they will help you set up on the right. website. Yeah. yeah, and it, it's, it's a, it was, we just finished setting up a process uh, for Marstown's public art program with the cafe. And, you know, everything has to be completely, as you know, um, transparent because yeah. this is money that the developer is putting into a fund. Right. So it's actually indirectly public money. Yeah. So um, you already have a, a team, but we appointed a, a I thought it, would, it was a good idea to have professional jurors, mm -hmm. so it wouldn't be the mayor and the town administrator and that, me. That's actually something we do. That, that's one that's of the things we, we do. Is we and we know made, how to use that those sites for public calls. It made a big difference because then when people say, "Well, who chose this?" Right? <laughs> like, who, like, who chose this person? I was able to say, "I have Cleveland Johnson. He's the director of the." Um, Mars Museum has a doctor from Oxford. Uh, I have um, Don Eman, the former um, public art person from the New Jersey State Council on the Arts, and another uh, woman who was the New Jersey Transit Public Art uh, Coordinator for 20 years. Mm -hmm. So when people in the town say, how, how did you pick it? I don't ever vote. I manage it, but I don't vote. And we made, we had, um, there's a project right now that we're managing, it's a $168,000 art project because two developers decided to put their money together. Um, so we had about 140 submissions for that piece of public, it was, an ex, you know, it's a, it was 175,000, I'm sorry. Um, and the mayor decided he wanted it to be an international he, he wanted it to be an international call to artists. So, of course, two of the finalists are from Australia. One from California and one from Oregon. And um, it's made it a little bit more complicated. You know, it, it's got to all come out of that budget. It's got to all come out of their budget. But, you know, we, you know just coordinating times so when we can Skype and like my son works for us, so he yeah. he's always figuring out all the time zone differences. Like, but um, it's going to be uh, a really big project, you know. And and my um, intention is that within ten years, Marstown will probably be known for its uh, world class public art projects. Yeah. So what time is it? It's on. Um, that's Yes. One of the things that we've worked hard to do is to curate local artists and to encourage them in their endeavors. Yes. So a lot of times when we put together these grants, we're working with local artists and partnering them with schools and things like that, which I'm part of. So how does, um, what kind of work can be done on that end to kind of, you know, I, I love the idea of bringing in outsiders, but there's also a tremendous treasure trove right here in the community. Oh, of course. And how do you find that balance yeah. and that input? I mean, it seems like in the Totem Project, certainly, you, you know, everyone Bye. probably had their best people, you know, put together the pieces. Right, you know, right. Part yeah, of she's, it. she's actually a local artist, the stone sure. trimmer. Oh, that's great. Yeah, she's from yeah. Madison. Plus, um, there's different types of grants um, that you can receive. Like one would be for an artist to come in from the outside to do something in your community. 
So they only will give you a grant if you bring somebody in from another state. Yeah, like we've worked on the national endowment for the Yeah, so you know. Yeah. So, but we've always but you want kind of looked in local artists, but would yeah, you like yeah. to be able to hire like a filmmaker yeah. that's from the town, you know, a, a young composer? Yeah, he's totally sustainable. I mean, I feel like nice. there's a time and a place for everything. And we have done a lot of work with local artists. I mean, a sure. lot of um, you know smaller projects. But when you start, with, the thing is, when you when you're working with these hundred, two hundred thousand dollar projects, the the amount of people and artists in the country that are actually capable of executing a two hundred thousand dollar art project are maybe two percent of all the artists I know. And those two percent are <laughs> Part of a team. Yeah, they usually work for, as a company. That you know, work. At, they have a, a an engineer. An architect. They have a lighting artist. They have an architect with them. When they're starting, then, to, you know, yeah. fixing things to the walls and things because like you that. Have to and know doing lighting. You know, you've like got these things hanging from a stairwell. Yeah. So it's a little bit different than doing, or like even with the stone carving. Sure. You want to make sure that person knows what the because you don't want kids playing around and those stones come tumbling down. Yeah, so absolutely. it's got to be somebody. Th that stone carver actually worked at St. John the Divine Cathedral. Uh, she was sent here from Germany as a young girl to um, do renovations on St. John the Divine. Isn't that cool? Yeah. yeah. Do, don't you love watching her, her hands? Yeah. Like she's so strong, right? Yeah. The stone carver. Yeah, yeah, she picks them up. She's like, I carry rocks. <laughs> <laughs> Strong like bull. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, That's very cool. But you guys are doing an amazing job. And know. you don't have to do cafe. The other thing. Well, like, like I've never, um, I've written requests for proposals for you know, and stuff right. and stuff like that, but for artists. Go on, New Jersey. Not. Go on, the New Jersey. Go on, um, Americans for the Arts. Or any yeah, age. She's already got the grant ready to spend the money. And yeah. Yeah. And my mind already had the grant. I know. That's what my goes. I mean, because you'll go on to public art, and they'll show, they'll tell you how to write a, a, a proposal for artists. They tell you everything there. Nice. It's okay. like a free so college. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. I'll definitely check out that. Yeah, because I'm like, oh. Yeah. And you could also just post it. You don't have to put it on cafe. You can just put it with, I think the uh, New Jersey State Council has a site. And you can just put it in the paper okay. if you want to do it hyper local, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The other thing too is I'm like, uh, you know, uh, we've done that community mural. I think it's like 20, 20, 30 thousand. I think it's gone. What's that? I mean, I think it's about twenty thousand. Yeah. It was like I was like, oh really? This? Oh, it's more. But, you know, whatever. But so then I, you know. I'm not an artist, so I'm trying to estimate like that wall on the bridge is pretty big. Yes. So I'm like, well, at least I'm like, I would say it's probably three or four times the size of the other one. So I'm like, well, I'll just multiply it from three or four from all that. Right. Yeah, but then you need artists in the work. Yeah. Because I just want to do a guy who does that. Dan like, has an um, he, he, he charges for his murals per square foot. Okay, and he's done oh, it, you. Um, you. you know, and that includes. Here's a big one that I did. And that includes oh, wow. the. Um, um, Grand Rapids, Michigan. That one's 130 feet long by 30 feet high. Okay. Yeah, that, that seems like about the size of our. Uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, just you know, the dental yeah. clinic. You just have to know <laughs> what equipment to use, you know. To, yeah. And um, you know. Well, this one's a little more challenging because of the water. It's oh over yeah. The water. I've done I've done them over water. Yeah, yeah, what's the one underneath? So you just use like um, like own. hanging scaffolding. Yeah, you know? that's what I was thinking. Damn. Yeah, I'm sorry. What's this one? Oh, but you think? Oh, the next one down is um, was too low. Or was that like? I had, I didn't take a look at the wall, I, so I have to take a look at it. Yeah, the one thing yeah you can bridge. measure it, yeah. and then um, because it's hard to come up with a price, but he's done so many of them that now he can just yeah. get the measurements. Well, you know, it's all about the, um, the condition of the wall, and then and then how you can get up to it. Like if you have to build a scaffolding, or if you can use a cherry picker. That's much easier. No, you know, if you ever scaffolding. built the scaffolding, it's a different price. You know, well, I think you can be hanging off the bridge. Probably. Yeah, I mean, like, I'm, I'm know, working like, on uh, window cleaners, kind of. Sure, thing. they have um, they have a cherry pickers that can go extend out. Oh, you know, so I, I'm working on on a project estimate right now, and I have to go over a building. 
to get to the mural. So oh. the, the, the uh, lift has to be 150 feet 10, uh, vertical, so I can go just across. That's just it, for the you know? lift for the month. Yeah, so you could, and like, that comes out you know, of uh, yeah, yeah, it's to rent it. It's, uh, it's ten thousand dollars to rent the lift. It's a hundred and fifty. Yeah, they have like they're called what? articulated booms. Yeah. You know? For how so, long is that? It's like a month. Oh yeah, you can rent. Yeah, you can rent them by the month, by week. Yeah. You know, whatever you need them for. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yes. For one, it's, it's like right? uh, yeah. all these different things. And then the, and then the weather is another consideration. Yeah. What if it rains for a month and you've got all this stuff planned? You know, so it's like you have to take that kind of stuff into consideration.